Hello, my name is Cal Molone from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, in lieu of another spreading anarchy video because it's sleeting today, it has been snowing on and off actually this whole past week. And so I've decided to put together a video that best demonstrates the three questions to anarchy. I often get asked what, what they are. <laughs> uh, so I figure I create a video so I can now uh, have a direct link source to the material. If uh, the would-be anarchists or activists you would be interested in spreading freedom in your community, you have a resource tool here to examine and to apply to your own uh, methods. And so with the three questions of anarchy, the background of that is I guess years of experience in studying human behavior, uh, human action, uh, I guess say trying to understand other people, trying to understand the world around me, and leading up to finally seeing if this, uh, I guess, anarchy can work, right? Anarchy cannot, cannot work no more than if you can't uh, spread it within your own interpersonal relationships. You know, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your friends, uh, girlfriend, uh, fiance, uh, neighbor, you know, and so that was uh, a problem that conflicted me for a while and that for the most part I've heard that you can achieve freedom in your lifetime because it's difficult to talk to people and then thus we just grow up to become an old curmudgeon, a you know, curmudgeon misanthrope um, and so which which means they, you know that they, they turn um, inwardly and they start uh, lambasting um, people outside the circles, people who don't get it, for example. And in my uh, I guess trials and tribulations and trying to reach out to those I love about anarchy, I came up over many months a really, I guess for me I find it to be a great condensed way of presenting the information. Um, instead of starting off and a lot of uh, different areas of anarchy trying to answer questions about what, what about the roads, what about this, what about the poor, what about you know, defense. Um, I found a, a way to, uh, to paint that into a bigger picture, but starting off with preliminary questions. I guess it's uh, very Socratic in a way. Uh, it's, uh, it kind of helps to answer a lot of the questions before you even get to having to answer the questions afterwards. So I found this to be a really great way to introduce the topic of freedom. Um, I found this to be a lot more helpful than if I were to just jump in and engage and start answering questions or providing other ideas um, that the many of us already know, you know, with what about the roads, for example. So I found this to be a good starting launching pad to have those discussions in a way that the person you're talking to will not feel alienated, will not feel on the defensive, will not feel that you're placing them into a corner or you're judging them. Um, it's a good starting point to start having these conversations. And so I'll start off with the uh, first question. Um, you know, I usually start off again with the sign with me. I have my ask me how government is a moral sign and people come up to me, but you can do this to, to anyone. Uh, you don't have to wait for someone to, to approach you. You can, you can have these conversations with your friends anywhere. Remember at a bar, at your house, at a cafe, you don't necessarily need a sign. For me, I just do that for, um, I guess, my own little anthropological um, activities. <laughs> um, so, first question. In your day-to-day -day life, do you use violence to solve your personal problems? Right? For the most part, people will say no. For the most part, people will say, I don't use violence. However, it's, uh, it's a question that uh, addresses another area. So some of these questions will have different asterisk marks, for example, that for, for example, if someone were to say, well, yeah, I use violence, but that's because for the most part, people have a lot of definitions of violence. People have a lot of different concepts of what is violence. And so, you know, especially in the world of uh, this propaganda, they'll say everything is violence. <laughs> they'll say everything is racist, everything is sexist. Um, so, it's, so that's a launching pad, the first question, to define it, especially in terms of would someone see, if you see someone hesitating, if they say, well, that's because they're uncertain. They have different areas, how they define violence in their lives, but for the most part, no one's really given them a good objective definition to show what is and what is not violence. And since violence has a very negative uh, connotation associated with it, I've uh, gone ahead and defined it as placing a person in an involuntary position without their, their consent or choice. 
So, you know, I rape, murder, theft, and assault. All violations of personal property rights, right? I own myself, I own my body. And from there, that's a great launching pad to establish that you own your own body. So whenever, if someone has a, is hesitant or is uncertain about uh, if they do use violence in their day-to-day -day lives, uh, you just give them that definition, right? Do you place people in involuntary positions without their consent or choice? And they'll say, oh no, absolutely not, right? Um, unless they're a sociopath and they want to come out on the camera or they want to out themselves perfect, I wish all of them would come out of the closet, right? It's, uh, that'd be very helpful and beneficial for society. We can kind of know where they are, know who they are. Um, and of course, the question is not, have you ever used violence? The question is in your day-to-day -day life. So that precludes a lot of maybe um, rare instances, maybe uh, moments of stress, moments of uh, irrationality that, uh, that they have done so. Um, so that helps to make them feel better. Yeah, you're right, I'm not a violent person. I don't use violence in my day-to-day -day life to solve problems. So that leads off to the second question. The second question would be, with the exception of self-defense, of yourself and others, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? And they'll, they'll think about it because everybody has a, a justification for using force onto another person and people will use that as self-defense, right? Of yourself and others, right? Uh, from being aggressed, you know, you're not initiating that violence, you're resisting that violence. You're pushing back against that initiation of force. You're not initiating force yourself. Right? You're just reacting towards someone exerting that unwanted uh, physical aggression onto you. Right? But there's a difference though, in areas, for example, when people talk about violence, they think like boxing, they think martial arts, they think a lot of different areas that has a lot of physical contact, but those are outlets of aggression. They're just aggressive sports. Like uh, boxing, for example, is an is aggressive sport. You know, but they have rules in boxing. Nothing below the waist, no ear biting Mike Tyson, and then we can box, right? But that's consensual. They talked about the rules, they consented to the rules and to the consequences. You get a penalty point, you get a red flag, you get a yellow flag, you get a go to the penalty box um, and they give consent to those or you know you're out of the game for a year, right? So in different areas in our life there are rules that many of us already uh, agreed to in the beginning before we engage and then we accept the consequences or the, the rewards, right? Um, so that helps, that, that example I found to be very useful in uh, just separating the two between violence and aggression. And so yeah, that's, that's a great way to, to launch off to, I guess, to denote what is self-defense. So these questions have a way of also helping to identify objectively and defining other areas of um, anarchism, you know, the tenets of uh, the non-aggression principle. And so the third question would be, uh, would you also consider it wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Now, technically, all of the three questions are the same, but it's, they're, they're presented in a manner that pretty much asks you, are you certain? Are you certain? Are you certain? Three more times, right? Um, and so that, that helps to cement, it helps to solidify your, the, the person you're talking to, the position that they already have this moral uh, virtue against that violence. So of course, would you violently force your ideas onto other people? Sometimes people get are hesitant about that because people will say, "Well, you know, maybe someone's doing an act of racism or something." They'll say, or uh, someone's doing something they shouldn't. They feel like they have to engage. Well, yeah, other areas of self-defense. Sure, if they're aggressing against you or other people. But do you violently force? Do you, you know, grab a person and hold them at gunpoint and say, "You have to do what I have, what I say," right? Instead of. Uh, do, in your day-to-day -day life, you, you use persuasion, you talk, you rationalize, you use reason, uh, you joke. Your, your voice may get louder, but it doesn't uh, transgress against the threshold of actually initiating that violence and hurting the person you're talking to, right? And so for the most part, that's, these are different ways to kind of respond to the hesitancies that people uh, may have. And I found that, that these are interesting, appropriate ways to respond to this. And again, of course, this whole thing is, um, this is my take on it. This is how I formulate all this stuff through my experience and um, my, my interactions with others. So anything in here you don't like, you know, take it out and use it for, for your own uh, rhetoric. Use it for your own uh, way of argumentation. Um, and that's pretty much what I'm hoping this video will help you to do, right? Uh, to improve, to define your own way of uh, talking to people, communicating anarchy, and uh, make it your own if you like. And so those three questions, after they've established, they say, no, I don't use violence in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, yes, um, 
that uh, that the initiation of force is wrong, and also yes, that the forcing your ideas onto other people is wrong. Um, great, that's fantastic because they're, they're pretty much there already. So they just told me then in your day-to-day -day life, then you don't use violence to solve your problems. That you already have this moral integrity already to begin with, and that's a very important to to, to state. Um, because for the most part, a lot of the, um, the things I found out there is that, you know, you don't get it, so you're a status. Um, and for the most part, they don't even know what a status is. <laughs> so it's an um, in interesting world out there and uh, this activism fight for to ending the state. But you start off with these preliminary questions and you find that they already have these moral position against using violence. Perfect. And then you tell them, well, in, in our community of individual people, for example, here in Richmond, we're taught though the only way we can uh, create any kind of change or make uh, solve any problems though is through government, right? Government tells us though the only way we can do that is through voting. So people vote. People vote with their ideas, with their opinions, with their preferences, and how best to solve that community problem. And in effect, they elect the politician. And that politician, his or her only job is to legislate those ideas and opinions into law. And then those laws of opinions are then backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. Right? You could take, uh, I always use the example of cannabis. Cannabis is a, finally, uh, people are finally getting on board understanding that it's a harmless drug. There's no evidence out there that it's murdered anyone, right? I mean, not murder, killed anyone. Um, and so I use that as a, as, as a good example of that. You know, you can look at government opinion that says that cannabis is, is wrong. And so if I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison, and with any point of refusal or resist because I don't agree with that opinion and try to escape, I'd be met with more violence or sometimes shot, murdered. And at the same time, government is even found into more violence because at no point do you have the freedom to say, I don't want to fund war, but I do want to fund the poor. Or you can, it can change them. I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. Or you can find another example. Uh, this is the area of describing what is taxation. The first part describes that government only knows how to solve problems through violence, through the threat of and use of violence. Through any of their ideas, all their ideas are backed and enforced by threats and use of violence, right? Every law, every edict by government, there's a gun behind that. Whether it's uh, an extortion fine you have to pay, but of course if you don't pay that extortion fine, right, you go into a cage. Um, so, of course, if you don't give up your property, you don't give up, well, that goes to taxation. So, government, again, only knows how to solve problems the one way. Government is even found it the more violence because at no point you have the freedom of economic choice to say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war, right? You have to give in your money. You have to give up your property. You have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice and what to do with your own money and how best to allocate your own resources, government wouldn't threaten to send you into another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. So that's the hidden violence. That's the, the matrix of this organization. This organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus though the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share, right? And that hints back to the first three questions that we talked about. We already established that we have this moral integrity against using violence. So now let's, why not just start with that, with that foundation, right? Um, versus this other area that contradicts that, <laughs> that tricks us into compromising our moral values to begin with, right? That's, if we're so against this evil, so against that violence, then that should be the, the very first thing we should be against. And any other areas that transgresses those uh, uh, moral positions that we hold. Um, and then from there, finally, finally, uh, well, yeah, and then I ask them, you know, what are your thoughts and comments? What are your, you have any questions? And they come to the conclusion that for the most part, they, they agree, they, they understand it. It's, it's a lot easier now to see the Leviathan. It's a lot easier now once you objectify it and, and paint a picture of it um, and what it, what it is. And then people will agree. I mean, you can look at the, the past videos and, and see for yourself, but I found this to be the best way to present um, the idea of anarchism for, for freedom. And from there, finally, you can start talking about uh, how government is a monopoly, a government has a monopoly on the services that you and I want, because for the most part, when people think, well, without government means without roads, without police, without all these other services, so you can start off saying, well, I want those services. I really do. I just want the freedom to be able to cancel or unsubscribe, right? As you would any other service. I want the freedom to compete entrepreneurially to provide you a better quality of service that um, will not threaten or harm you or, or abuse you as a consumer. Right, and then finally, yeah, then finally, you can 
bring in all of the the information that uh, you, you know about answering what about the roads, what about healthcare, what about uh, war, defense, um, and everything, all the different areas of life in society. And, and the, that particular area, maybe I'll do videos on it sometime, but I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, come across this channel, you have somewhat of a good understanding of uh, those particular arguments. And yeah, so that's my three questions to anarchy. Um, and I hope uh, that benefits you uh, in some way, as it has me. It's my, I guess, my empirical evidence. I guess for the most part, the videos that I do out there for the spreading anarchy is my compilation of empirical evidence that I need to show myself that validates for me that I can do this, that, that I'm not alone out there in this, that we, we can push forward. We do have these fundamental moral positions against these violence. They said we just never talk about it, right? We never define it for, for one another or engage in conversations for one another. And the fact that uh, at least one person understands it, finally my girlfriend, my, my friends, um, my mother, <laughs> my sister, my brother, um, that's in the beginning, that's all I needed uh, to know that it can be done. And this is something that I will continue to do. Um, hopefully it, <laughs> the weather starts getting better around here so I can start uh, recording more conversations, but that's all it's gonna take. Remember, you don't have to convince the world, you don't have to convince all of the United States, the 300, what, 60 million people just the population in your town, city, or community, so you have to, to go out there and engage. In Richmond, there's 208,000. You only need to convince a good 10% of that. And after that, it, the ideas start proliferating. You know, once you're unplugged from the matrix, once you see the truth, you see the violence and evil that is statism, you don't plug yourself back in afterwards. It's difficult to pretend that doesn't exist. So though the people who, who unplug themselves, who, who take the, have the courage to, to step across that, that, to step on that line and say enough is enough, or these are the people who will continue to grow this movement. These are the people who have the, the courage to stand up against statism. And so this can only increase exponentially. Uh, whereas in politics, uh, it doesn't. <laughs> and politics is all about, well, my guy didn't win, so I'll wait around another four more years and wait for hope and for someone else, another salvation will come in um, and give me my freedom that was rightfully mine. So instead of taking it in your own hands and going out there and grabbing it yourself. And so with that, hopefully you enjoy this video and this content. Um, share and subscribe if you can. And with that, I'll see you guys at the victory party. Take care, guys.